What is up everybody, it's Stas here, and in this video we're going to be talking about the top couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching and looking to trade right now in the month of November in 2019. And as you guys read in the title, we're also going to be talking about natural gas because it saw a massive gap down today. What are my thoughts on that? You gas, D gas for this upcoming week, we're going to be talking about that and very briefly taking a look at the overall markets in terms of these futures, the S&P futures, NASDAQ, and Dow Jones, and very briefly taking a look at the S&P index to see what the market has been doing over the past couple of days and the overall trend of the market over the past couple of weeks. So if you guys enjoyed this video, if you guys find value in this video, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing if you do want to see further content from me, and if you want to be further connected with the Strive Smart community, the Discord group chat's linked down below, the Facebook group's linked down below. And if you want to buy some merch, that is linked down below as well. So without further ado, let's just get right into it. And let's talk about and start off here with the S&P 500 in under a minute. Let's see what it's been doing over the past couple of days. So clearly here on the 20 day, one hour chart, this thing is uptrending, right? It's riding the moving averages. This 50 SMA, this green line has been acting as a support, higher highs, higher lows, all of that good stuff. And if you guys watched my video on Friday, we talked about how the S&P closed very, very bullish because you can see we didn't break below that 50 SMA. We held it at a higher low in the morning and we ended up closing on a very strong push up, as you guys can see on this one day, one minute, right? We bottomed out at about 30.73. We found nice support at around 30.85, which was an old all time high. Um, we held that as a new support. And again, from there, we saw the nice push up. The bulls took over here um, in, in power hour on Friday and ran us all the way up to 3093. So at this point, based on the S&P index and uh, the way it's been moving, you know, I expect further green here and uh, potential pop up to 3100 and above this week. And that will obviously be a, a, an all time high as the all time high right now is 3097. So overall, guys, the trend on the 500 large just uh, public publicly traded companies, which is the S&P 500 is up, right? And over the past five trading days, you know, we kind of consolidated around this level that was a resistance at 3085. Then ultimately we gapped up above it, hitting that all time high, closing above that resistance as a support at again, 3085, closing up strong. So that is very, very bullish in terms of the 20 day performance of the S&P and the five day performance, which was last week's session. So very quickly, guys, let's take a look at what the futures are looking like right now. The E-mini S&P 500 index futures down about $2.50 right now, down about 0.08%. So nothing crazy, right? You know, if we pull down, I've been talking about this over the past couple of videos. It's possible that, you know, we do hit that all-time high again, like I said, 3,100. But from there, we may pull down and maybe test that 50 SMA again, maybe at 3,066, maybe at 3070. That is very possible. And if I, if I pull up that chart again on the SPX, you know, on the hourly chart, hey, we may hit that all time high again, 3100, then pull down maybe 3085, 3060, and uh, either continue the uptrend or maybe do something that this arrow indicates of maybe a further sell off down to maybe like 3030, um, you know, 3020. That is possible if we do see a bigger correction of about two, three, maybe even four percent, right? The NASDAQ right now down about $8.25, down about 0.1%. So nothing really crazy there either. The Dow Jones right now down about $17, down about 0.06%. And again, just like the S&P and the NASDAQ, nothing really crazy. So what am I looking for this upcoming week, guys? Well, tomorrow... Just like every Monday, I'm going to be watching large caps. Are they gapping up? Are they gapping down? I'm going to be watching, obviously, these futures. You know, if these futures are, let's say, up 
a quarter of a percent, you know, uh, you know, 0.3%, 0.4% in the morning. What's that going to be telling me, guys? That's going to be telling me that these markets are pushing into these higher high levels that we just talked about and to those all-time highs um, in terms of the S&P here. And at that point, honestly, the Dow might be at an all-time high yet again as well if we do end up gapping up. Same thing with the NASDAQ. And of course, let's say the futures are down. You know, if they continue th this little downside spell that they're on right now. Let's say we open up, you know, down a quarter percent, whatever it may be. We may be seeing a bit of a retracement in the markets from there on the S&P. Let's say, for example, we may be going down to, again, that level we talked about a couple of minutes ago, maybe 3080, 3075 before either holding that at a higher low and continuing the uptrend or, again, falling down and seeing an even further sell-off. So that's kind of what I'm thinking right now um, in terms of these overall markets. And without further ado, guys, let's get right into it and talk about some of the main stocks and ETFs that I'm watching right now. And let's start off with you guys, because that is what we uh, saw in the title and natural gas in general, guys, because this has been the talk of the town. A lot of people in the community talk about you gas, D gas, natural gas. And honestly, a lot of you guys like watching those videos. So let's just get right into it and talk about it and break it down because, like I said, I don't know if I actually mentioned it in the beginning of the video, natural gas saw a massive gap down when the futures market opened about an hour and 22 minutes ago. You guys can see it's down about $0.09 cents right now, down about 3.5%. And this is going to equate over to you guys being down tomorrow. If this level holds, it's going to open down about... I'd say like 9 to 10 to maybe even 11%, which it's going to be a nice, pretty, pretty sizable gap down on you guys. But the thing that I want to talk about here is technically, guys, you know, although we did break moving average support levels with the gap down, we're still technically speaking here on the hourly chart at a higher low for natural gas, right? And you guys can see what I'm saying. We hit the low here at 228. The next low is at at about 258 and now we're kind of holding this support at around 268 to about 270 which was an old resistance at a higher low if this holds right if this holds and we start to run up tomorrow you know back into the 270s maybe 275 this can be really the uptrend continuing here because you have to realize right natural gas this is a 20-day chart you're looking at natural gas went from 220 to 290 in literally the matter of 10 to 15 days. So this is profit taking. This is it cooling off. This is not a huge, huge downtrend beginning in my personal opinion, because a lot of us know at this point, we're getting into the season where demand for natural gas pumps up, right? We already saw an injection this past Thursday in terms of the inventory report that was less than expected, which is what caused that massive UGAS spike. Now think about it, guys. When we start to get withdrawals of this natural gas, right, when demand starts to kick in as this weather gets colder, what is that going to do? And especially if shorts start to cover here, because there are a lot of shorts, um, you know, on natural gas right now, if they cover and it causes a squeeze, what's that going to do? That's going to shoot up the price coupled with that, that demand that's coming in. I can see this, you guys flying up and natural gas flying up over the next, the next couple of weeks, despite this pullback that we're seeing, right? Which is why, again, I'm not worried about this pullback. In, in my opinion, opinion, this is simply a cool off period for natural gas before the real winter kicks in and before the demand starts to kick in. And honestly, before, you know, the price starts to fly up, right? Just take a look at this. This was simply, um, in, you know, in terms of a percentage, this is simply a 7% pullback from the peak. You guys can see last time we saw a sizable correction, you know, we went from 273 down to about 258, which was around roughly the same of about a actually a bit less about 5.6 to about a 6% pullback so at this point guys for this upcoming week I'm going to be watching the inventory report very very closely right if we get a withdrawal 
If we get, you know, a, a cold forecast um, in terms of weather, which I already saw a lot of cold weather coming in from the Midwest over these next couple of weeks, um, you know, of course, heading into the Northeast as well. You know, I think this is ultimately going to continue to go up, but it's a matter of when that is going to happen. And we all know, guys, most of us watching this channel, you know, when natural gas is going up, you guys is going up as well, right? It goes up at a 3x rate, which it, 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 it is honestly why it's going to be down at a 3x rate, you know, if natural gas holds this negative 3.5% that it's at, right? So if it opens up, you know, minus 3.5%, and you guys is going to be down probably into the 17s, I'd say, uh, probably 16s, uh, actually probably not 16s, more like the high 17s or high 16s, low 17s is where I think it would be. And on a technical basis, guys, that's going to be on top of the 180 SMA, which last time we played um, and, and touched that 180 SMA, we rocketed up after. And that will technically still be a higher low, which again reiterates my point, which is uh, really I'm not worried about, um, you know, natural gases rally ending here, you gases rally ending here. I just think this is a cool off period. I think we're simply going to hit a higher low here, whether it's 16, 17, maybe even down to 15, guys, wherever we end up bottoming out at, I think eventually this thing is going to rebound and uh, head back into the 20s, 21s, maybe even higher, especially as natural gas, um, if natural gas sees that squeeze that a lot of people are expecting, right? So back to NG, watch 270, watch 272. Um, of course, if we break back into 275 territory, back up into 277, 276, we may be filling the gap back up to 290, and anything above 290, we may be going up to 3 bucks, which is another resistance um, that I'm looking at here based on, uh, let's see, this hourly chart. You guys can see it right here, um, 290. Up above that is uh, 3, 305, 310, um, etc. Right. So overall, that's what I'm thinking in terms of um, natural gas. Don't panic, guys. I think this will eventually rally back up as these weeks move on, as demand starts to kick in, withdrawals of natural gas start to occur, and as this weather continues to get colder. So let's talk about some stocks now that we talked about natural gas and you guys. I have some on my uh, phone right here. The first one that I want to talk about is Shopify, guys. So Shopify, if we look on the four-hour chart here, it seems like it's finding a support at about 280 to 285 bucks. It seems like it's already bottomed at that level um, where we bottomed at towards the end of June in 2019, towards the end end of September and honestly over the past couple of weeks in the month of October as well and I guess you can say right now in the beginning of November so we've bottomed out at this point multiple times and from the peak guys at 409 bucks to where we are right now how much money um you know or rather how much percent has fallen well 27 to 28 percent and what does that mean if we're looking to swing trade something that is how much money we can make in terms of a percentage value if we bought in here and if we sold at the peak if it were to rally back up to $409. So the earnings report is kind of what caused this uh, little drop right here, quite honestly, guys. And I forget off the top of my head exactly what they reported, but you can see here if I just hover over... Um, they were expected 14 cents of EPS. They came in negative 29. So they lost money um, when they were supposed to be profitable in terms of EPS. So that is most likely what's causing this downwards pressure on the stock. But ultimately, I can see this one reversing. And what I'm looking for, as you guys can see by this arrow, is going to be a break above that 50 SMA and that 180 SMA being this green and yellow line. I think if we get that break and into, let's say, the 315 to 330-ish territory, I think this could be a good entry point on a potential breakout um, for Shopify. And the truth is, guys, I look deeper into Shopify. Their balance sheet is quite um, impressive if you're just looking at a cash standpoint and a debt standpoint. They have very minimal debt on their balance sheet, and they have $2 billion of cash, $2 billion of cash 
slash. That is pretty solid um, in terms of uh, um, a balance sheet, and their revenues are growing like crazy. I think it's 40% year over year um, in terms of Shopify's revenue. So this is very much a growth company. So we can really see a pop and break here and a continuation, especially due to how hot the stock has been over the past couple of months. But of course, there's bears out there that think this stock is heading back down to low low 200s, high 100s, whatever it may be. And if we do get that, right, if the bears do come out on top here and we start to run back down, at that point, guys, as a swing trade, not going to be looking at it because those technicals won't be attractive. Maybe as a long-term growth position, um, maybe if it gets back down in the low 200s, we could potentially consider that. But that's another video for, um, that's another topic for another video, honestly, guys. So another stock I want to talk about is Procter & Gamble. This is one that a lot of people consider, you know, a value play, a safer stock. And to be quite honest, guys, it's been in a weird spot over these past couple of trading weeks ever since they reported their earnings. I remember I swing traded it, I think it was through their earnings or after their earnings, made a nice profit, I exited out and I was thinking to myself, I want to get back in. I want to get back in, but I knew I had to be patient and see what the pattern was going to give me over the next couple of uh, weeks and days, right? And now I finally feel like I'm at that point where I could potentially re-enter into Procter & Gamble, especially if it holds this $120 level. And this is a very important level because it's a support. Well, it was an old resistance from the middle of August. And if we break this level, guys, this new support we're at, you know, we may be filling down to about 115 bucks. And if we do do that, um, ultimately, that's not going to be too good for the bulls because let me show you guys this trend we're on right now. We're on this trend and technically right now we're holding a higher low on this trend. And if we gap down to that 115 level, we're completely breaking that higher high, uh, or really, or really the higher low trend of the uptrend. And if, especially if we break 115, guys, that's going to be very, very bad in, in terms of Procter and Gamble on a technical basis. So as long as we hold this higher low here at 119. 120 and we start to rally back up you know maybe 121 would be a nice entry point um, and I'm going to set an alert right here on Procter and Gamble to be alerted if um, we do end up breaking 121 um, I'll probably take a swing position there that offers me about um, three to four percent of profit up to that previous all-time high and of course if we break that even more money in Procter and Gamble another stock PYPL guys also known as PayPal. So PayPal and Visa they reported earnings a couple of weeks ago. I believe PayPal did uh, they beat on EPS and revenue and their earnings in general were just very good and you can see it on the price action of the stock um, you know after they reported it went from 96 and really the next week of trading it was trading at 107 bucks so after earnings it went up 11 points and since then it's kind of cooled off up until now and right now we're seeing it holding that $100 level of support that we double bottomed that back in the beginning um of October before we rallied up and before we started to sell off. So at this point, I think this is very critical, guys. And we can see based on the action from Friday, we closed very, very bullish, right? We found support at 100 bucks. We pretty much retested it and we closed above moving averages. In my opinion, that's signaling further upside for this upcoming week, especially since we're breaking out of the 50 SMA on this hourly chart as well. So for PayPal, what I'm looking at that is a really, really just a gap up into the 102s, 103s, and that is where I'm looking to enter into the position. And ultimately, after we break out of these moving averages on the four hour chart, I think that's going to be the main confirmation because I'm scared to get in. In, in a full position under these levels because, you know, these moving averages on the four hour chart have been a resistance over the past couple of months. So for me to be in a more comfortable spot, I'd like to maybe get in with a small position here at 102, then add the bulk of my position, um, you know, after we head into the 104s, 105s, which would be putting us above those moving averages. So PayPal, those are kind of my thoughts 
on that one. McDonald's is another one that a lot of people have been talking about. They've been in the news for the wrong reasons. Their CEO, I believe his name was Steve Easterbrook. Steve Easterbrook. You, my friend Steve Easterbrook, you made a mistake. He got caught with, you know, he had a relationship with an employee. He got fired. McDonald's stock tanked after that. Well, not really tank. I don't want to exaggerate it, guys. It didn't really tank. But if we look on the five-day chart, probably uh, the 10-day chart will show it. You can see it. I think it was this day. You know, we went from 198 um, down to about 187. So I guess you can say that was a tank move in terms of a, a blue chip a company like McDonald's, 10 points in a day. Um, that That's pretty bad. Um, and from there, you know, we've been recovering 187. Uh, we broke above 193. Now we're holding 193 as a support. So ultimately at this point, ideally what I'd like to see is a break out of these moving averages on this hourly chart and really a, a, a move up to 198 bucks, which would be, if we broke that, a very bullish move that could get us back into the 200s and to that $205 price level. And to be quite honest with you guys, I'm looking at McDonald's right now as a long buy, a long-term buy. This could be a swing trade. You know, once we break into the 198s, I'm actually already holding it in my swing account right now, um, but it could also be a long-term buy. At these levels, you know, their payout ratio is 60%. If you guys don't know, McDonald's is a dividend-paying stock. I don't think they're a dividend king. I think they're uh, um, dividend growth, you know, in terms of how many years they've, they've grown their dividend. I think it's 42 years or something like that. Um, you know, again, 60% payout ratio, dividend yield of about 2.5%. They have 40,000 stores worldwide. This company is very, very massive. And a lot of people view it as a real estate company because 95% of their, uh, their locations, their franchises, right? Their franchises where McDonald's takes a fee from those buildings, you know, from, you know, uh, the, the, those ran franchises, right? So in my opinion, this, if you're looking long, long term, it could be a buy. And if you're looking to swing trade it, I definitely think it could be a play, um, especially if we break, like I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, into those levels of uh, 198, 200 bucks, and especially above 200 bucks. So McDonald's, that's kind of what I'm thinking there. Facebook is another one that I'm watching here. As always, guys, at this point, Facebook needs to make a move back into the 193s. We've we've broken below 193, guys, which is not too attractive, um, but the attractive thing is we're still holding the trend that I just drew um, of higher highs, higher lows, right? If we were to break down this week, you know, into the uh, mid 180s, that's not going to be too good. Um, and for me, that won't be good because I'm actually swing trading Facebook right now. But ideally, what I'd like to see is a break again above the 192 level and honestly a higher high and into the 200s. That would be absolutely ideal, especially as they did quite well in terms of their earnings. I'm hoping that momentum can push us back into, again, that $200, uh, $200, uh, la, la, la. I can't talk, guys, $200 level and maybe even to the $205 level and uh, ideally higher than that. So Facebook, you know, just watch this trend that I just drew for you guys. If it breaks into the mid-180s, that's not a good sign. If it gaps up tomorrow into the mid-190s, that is a good sign. Um, so Facebook, watching that. Disney is another one that we talked about um, on Friday's video. And let me show you guys on this one-day chart. Actually, Actually, no, 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 that does not do it justice. The five-day chart, what I'm looking at here. So they reported earnings. They crushed it. I believe they missed on revenue, but they crushed on EPS. And it seems like the stock investors, you know, traders, they didn't give a crap about the miss on revenue. They love that 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 beat on EPS. And the fact that Disney Plus is coming out here, um, I think in like two, three days or something like that. We saw the pop from 132 up to about 142. And that sell-off, is what I'm finding attractive here and that nice uh, bullish close that we saw and the nice hold into the after hours. That's also what I'm finding attractive, right? So from that 142 peak down to where we closed, that's about a 3% margin of profit open. So heading into the session tomorrow, what am I looking for, right? I'm looking to get in Disney 
ideally if it holds 138 into the morning session. That is ideal. If we start to uptrend from there, continue the uptrend, that is where I'll enter with a limit order probably at around 141 bucks to get out at about that 2% profit. So I'm thinking Disney right now, has a lot of momentum, right? A lot of momentum due to this EPS beat, a massive, massive EPS beat. Again, Disney Plus is launching. That might even shoot us up even further. So this is definitely a dip, I'm thinking, um, in terms of Disney stock. And if we just drag it out a bit to the four-hour chart, you guys can see, you know, we got rejected at 142, um, which is that level that we got hit at towards the end of April into the month of May. And if we break that tomorrow, guys, again, with the hype from Disney Plus, maybe if we get hype from it, um, and if this momentum from the earnings continue, we could end up going to 145, which is even further from 142, obviously, which would give us an extra 2% on top of that initial 2.5% that we're talking about. So ultimately, this has about, you know, 4 or 5% in the tank. Um, again, if we get in at these 138 levels, which would be ideal in my opinion. So, let me check the list, guys. Any other stocks? Okay, we talked about those. Um, you know, one more on my head is Atvi, guys. You know, Atvi, Activision, Blizzard. Um, they reported earnings. They beat on EPS and revenue. Their guidance wasn't that great, which is what caused the stock to dump after they reported earnings, right? You guys can see it here. Um, this was the day before, actually. The stock was anticipating earnings. Then they sold off heading into earnings. We got the earnings. They kind of bottomed at about 50 53.20. Now we're starting to gap up and we're seeing a bit of a bullish breakout here on the five day, five minute. The fact that we closed above the moving averages and we held 54.20 very strongly. This is a double bottom um, as a support. That's looking pretty strong in my opinion. So what am I looking for in AtV in particular here? I want to see a gap up into the $55 level tomorrow. That is ideal. If we get that, that's going to be momentum to the upside in my opinion. And, uh, Ideally, I'll enter here, probably above these moving averages, and um, really swing trade it up to uh, 57 bucks, 57.40, which at that point would offer around three, four percent in terms of uh, margin of profit. So those are a couple that I'm watching um, heading into this week, guys. I could talk about a lot more. Trust me, I got a bunch of DMs, but the truth is, I can't fit every single stock and ETF into this video, or the video would be an hour. Trust me, guys. I have so many more to talk about, but we'll get to the ones that I didn't talk about in today's video in tomorrow's video. So make sure to subscribe to the channel for that. And honestly, if you enjoy the video, subscribe anyway, right? Why not? I talk about stocks every single day on this channel. I go over the markets, you know, what am I doing? And of course, earnings, anything big coming up to watch out for, it's covered on this channel. So if you guys enjoyed the video, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing if you do want to see further content from me. And if you want to be further connected with the Strive Smart community, the Discord links down below, the Facebook links down below, as well as the merch and all of the social links, Twitter, Instagram, all of that good stuff is linked down below. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Peace out.